So I'm with, <laughs> so I'm with Julia Conti from Italy, mm-hmm. a former Olympian. And we're here to just preview the 2020 49er FX, 49er, NACRA Worlds. You're a, an FX coach. I am. Who are you coaching? I am. I'm coaching one of the U.S. teams, uh, Stephanie Robo and Maggie Shea. Uh, this is the second of, uh, and last of our Olympic trials. So, yeah, it's going to be a nice event. We're ready and yeah, can't wait for you know, tomorrow to start. So we're going to go through who we think is, you know, who are some of the favorites in 49er FX particularly. We can talk about the other classes a little bit, but um, we're most familiar here at this table with the 40, 49er FX. Um, but we can't go further into that talking about the forecast and who's favorite in, unless we talk about Alex Maloney and Molly Nietzsche. Yeah. So Alex Maloney just fractured her foot. You just found out about that yesterday. Yeah. And so from New Zealand, the Olympic representative, uh, an Olympic medalist, and she uh, just pulled out of this world. So what does that mean to the fleet? Does that have an impact when a top competitor pulls out? For sure, I mean, it's, uh, first of all, it's, it's never pleasant to get injured because, uh, especially if it's fractured, it means that it's a pretty long recovery. Uh, mm-hmm. I know that because I've been through that too when I was sitting at FX, my crew got injured during the Europeans in, uh, uh, back in 2014 and mm-hmm. uh, it was a yeah, pretty long recovery, but um, yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's, not, it's never pleasant when you when you get injured, and also it's not pleasant to you know lose in this championship one of the potential favorites because I mean they were uh, always constantly sailing the top uh, silver medalist in Rio, um, really really uh, good sailors and. Uh, yeah, it's a pity, and, and I think it's a pity also for the other uh, top-level uh, competitors that you know, it's it's always nice to sail against the best uh, sailors. You know? Right, so it does leave a little bit of a hole. Right? Yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. and also they're such nice girls, and you know, it's yeah, it's a pity. Do you, now you when I told you you were a little sad by that. Do, does this does this fleet, even though they're competitive with each other for championships and for the Olympics and even for their own national teams? Um, do they kind of bond together? In, yeah, absolutely. The, the <clears throat> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, um, it's such a nice sport because you know, outside, yes, we are all enemies. We, right. they are. I'm not. I'm yeah. not that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I feel part of it. So. Yeah. Um, but then you know, when ashore, it's all another story. You know, people have dinner together. They live in houses together. You know, um, so it's. It's, it's a big family. Yeah, and so it's the opposite of like, oh great, that's one more spot I can move up. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure that nobody, nobody thought about that it. Way. Yeah, no, for sure not. Yeah. And, and injuries, we'll just speak briefly about this, but there, there are, you know, both in the 49er, 49er FX and NACRA, they're probably where you get most of your injuries in Olympic sailing. Yeah, absolutely. They're the highest performance boats and the fastest boats in Olympic sailing. So. Yeah, this was obviously, in a cap size. Yeah, obviously it's almost the it's also the most dangerous boat, um, and I mean it's part of the game. Like in every you know uh, sport like this, which uh, involves uh, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Injuries. Yeah, injuries. <laughs> um, that you know, I mean it's part of the game. That's, Cool. Now, um, so that is kind of a little sad spot in yeah. the, just before we even start out these worlds. So, but let's look at the um, who's left. <laughs> um, you're the you're the American coach, and, or one of the American coaches, mm-hmm. and uh, but let's let's work well, let's work up kind of not necessarily from the bottom of the fleet. But is there anyone that from the last worlds, which is very close to now, mm-hmm. that's a little strange to have two worlds within a month or two of each other, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but is there a uh, a team or two that have been surprising the fleet, like in Auckland, and then that you expect might feature better now because they're on an upswing. Um, well, for sure, the Argentinians have had a very good words. They got eighth. Uh, right. in, and that's really uh, awesome for them, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a really good result. Um, um, Who's that? The uh, people? It's uh, Vicky Travascio and Sol Brands. Okay. Um, they still have very good words, uh, and um, it was a breezy event, I would say, and they always 
a little bit struggled in that in those conditions, and yeah. it was uh, really good. That, although it was very windy, they, they were surprising the same very well. Um, um, so I think that was uh, really good. Cool. Um, I think the Dutch team also is doing a very good job. Awesome. Um, yeah, they weren't on our yeah. radar screen for a while, right? Yeah, but besides, of course, one team won. They're the first team to win two championships back to back. Right. And yeah. but True. the other teams, the other, yeah, team. the other teams are, you know, climbing up pretty quickly and they're sitting really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, I think also the Germans, uh, Tina Lutz and Sami Boyke, did a very good um, uh, words in New Zealand. Unfortunately, Sami the crew got injured. Um, during training um, in Argentina in January, so yeah. she also fractured her we've, foot. We've been hearing a, a lot of that. Not just yeah. not just Alex. I mean, I'm talking about other yeah. teams. Yeah, yeah, and so it's a pity uh, she can't sail. But Tina found a um, uh, replacement crew to go through these Olympic trials. Yeah, um, it's part of their trials too. Yeah, it's part of their trials. So. I think it's uh, it's trials for a lot of teams. Mm -hmm. um, this event. So how about for the top? Well, the top. It's, Do you have a, uh, is there is there a favorite in this fleet right now, or not really? Well, maybe there can be a, a top five group, but maybe not a favorite. To yeah, I think uh, looking from outside, uh, I think the Brazilians are um, sailed really well. Right, um, and they seem very relaxed. Yeah, very relaxed. As they and, should be. <laughs> yeah, and they they have so much experience. They've been, they've been sailing together for a very long time, and they perfectly know how. I mean, when they have to perform, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so I think that's a big advantage for them. Right. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting, you know, to see also if the Dutch can hold uh, the title for the third time in a, in a row. Right. Um, I saw the Norwegians also doing really well. Right. Um, now they're lately. training partners, right? Yeah. So explain that to me. Who, who, there's a group, right? Is it? It's, it's Brazil, cool. New Zealand, and Norwegian and Norway. And are, they train together. Yeah. They're training partners. They, and you just mentioned two of those three teams, and Alex is out. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, they for sure raised uh, their level uh, pretty quickly. Um, they're is always that, in the top five. Is that unusual to have three nations training together and they're competing against each other at the top level? Uh, it's not unusual when you don't have um, other boats in your country. For example, Brazil, it's just them. It's just New them. Zealand, yeah, the few uh, crews started lately, but. Yep. Uh, they, they started the program uh, probably earlier than yeah, other that's really that, That's really important to understand that that's the way they're training and yeah. then why. Yeah, so. and, and also no, in Norway, they are the only girls sitting in yeah. the text, so mm -hmm. somehow they you know need to join forces. And but they're all duking it out for the world. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and that's, you know, to go back to that point of being friends and rivals at the same time, yeah. it's exactly the same. They have a really good relationship, all of them, you know, they're making debriefs together and all this stuff and, and they're killing each other on the water, you know? Do you think, you know, I was talking, we were talking about the 20th anniversary of the 49er mm -hmm. is kind of happening and we were talking to the men who were the, you know, first sailors in that and versus the men and women that are sailing now and the difference in level and, you know, they were having a really good time in a big breeze world here, um, but now it's a little bit more refined of a game. Do you find that right now, you know, that Martina and her crew were, kind of really pretty dominant, you know, leading up to and including 2016. Do you feel that the, the fleet is even closer now in terms of progression? For sure. The for level. Sure. For sure the level uh, increased a lot. Mm -hmm. um, even since 2016? Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. Definitely. definitely. Yeah, that's nice to see. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, uh, the girls can sail easily in any conditions that also the boys can sail. Right. Um, so, I mean, um, and also the level of the effects in general raised a lot. Um, so yeah, it's it's really nice to watch from outside. You know, when yeah, yeah. I used to be a sailor, it was, yeah. it was not so um, easy to understand. You know how other crews behave. And it's really good to from outside. So, yeah, let's let's talk about that a little bit, and then we can talk about those other two classes just briefly. Um, you've just you've transitioned to coaching. How long ago? After the Olympics in Rio. Right. So you, and what were you selling there? Uh, the FX. The FX. Um, your life, even when I met you, were in match racing. Mm -hmm. Your life has been really dedicated to sport, particularly Olympic sailing, mm -hmm. for a long period of time. And, you know, what would you say, like 10 years or oh, more? More. more. Yeah, more. Four Olympic campaigns. Four so. Olympic campaigns. Yeah. And um, 
emotionally, you're, you're really, you're so dedicated to the sport. Emotionally, how hard was that to make that transition from constantly going for this one goal for four Olympic campaigns and then to decide not only to not, not just to stop that, but also to move your career, mm -hmm. you know, still stick with the, the sport, but to shift into a different role. Is that hard, like uh, psychologically? Well, actually, I wasn't planning to become a coach after I, I stopped uh, sailing. Actually, and why did you stop? I stopped uh, because I, 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 I think I was not motivated enough to right. do another Olympic campaign. Right, um, right. It happens. Was, yeah, I mean, after <laughs> four games, it's, I, mean, I think it was enough. Right. And mm. I want to do something completely different, but mm. then I was confused for a year, and mm. then I got this opportunity to coach um, um, first uh, for 70 team, Argentina, and then cool. an Italian FX team. Yeah. And right off the bat, did you enjoy it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I loved it. I loved it, and I, I I felt like maybe I had something, you know, to to say and to give, and uh, yeah. it felt really nice and. Uh, uh, yeah, and and then randomly, I I met Steph and Maggie. Yeah, yeah. Well, I knew them already before, right, right. but at one regatta we met, and um, they basically hired me for a week to see how it would work, and mm -hmm. it worked well. And awesome. I continued, and it's it's really nice. I mean, it's been it's been a journey already of uh, two and a half years, and mm -hmm. it's it's really nice to be on the other side. And, see you know them um, getting through some stuff that you already been through and right, right. try to guide them mm -hmm. so that they don't do the same mistakes you did. <laughs> yeah well, that, that, it does actually sound enjoyable when you put it that yeah. way yeah. <laughs> maybe a little less stress for sure less stress <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I mean there's there are coaches that say that they were less stressed while sailing yeah, and, yeah. but I was definitely much more stressed when I was racing than when I'm coaching but yeah. Still, it's stressing, you know. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. You want them to do their best. Yeah, of course. Um, well, we're going to start to wrap it up, and we'll just, um, you know, the let's move on to the 49er. And, you know, the one question I'm down here on an assignment also to do, you know, what's up with uh, Peter Burling and Blair Took? You know, are they kind of unstoppable? And what's their formula? Um, as an outside observer, but knowing the class pretty keenly, um, do you have any, any comment? You know, are they, do they seem like an unstoppable force or like the FX, has everyone gotten a little closer going into this world? Yeah, for sure. The gap got closer, but mm. I think there's still... Is it more like an escalator? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, all the experience that, you know, they're doing with the America's Cup is... Uh, it's something helping. other sailors don't have. Yeah, right? absolutely. And it's helping them for sure in... Uh, uh, developing even more their skills on the F on the 49. Yeah, I should I should have thought about it that way. I was just thinking about a time in that boat, but it's yeah. it's not just that. I don't think they spend more time than the others on the F on the on the 49. Right. Um, mm -hmm. On the contrary, probably they spend less time because right. they have also the caps going on. But I mean, they they you look at them and they seem so confident on the boat all the time that it's like you know they're. You know, they were born to be on that boat. I don't right. know. It's just, it's so nice to see them sailing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and I think everyone enjoys it, yeah. even if you're behind. Them. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> now let's shift to NACA really quick. Mm -hmm. um, you're a proud Italian. Yeah. Um, you know, Ruggiero was talking about the selection criteria, which is they don't know it, and, um, and it's very difficult on them a little bit. Uh, but they're top two teams in the world, basically. Yeah. You know, they're excellent. Um, but uh, unlike what we're talking about with uh, Pete and Blair, uh, it seems like that fleet is really close. Yeah. Like there's really no standouts yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, and same thing even with FX with Martina. Um, do you? What's your impression of that fleet? Do you think it's kind of up in the air who wins those those worlds? Yeah, I think so because mm. uh, I mean it's it's a new class, of course. I mean right. changing it's the same class, but changing the foils, the foils after Rio makes it a new class. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I think people are still trying to understand how this code works. Yeah. And um, some people uh, probably uh, found it out earlier than other um, uh, crews. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that slowly the gap uh, with the top ones mm -hmm. uh, is decreasing and 
unfortunately for me because I'm yeah. Italian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But I mean, the last two words, two different Italian teams right. won the world, won mm-hmm. uh, the gold medal. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, I hope they go for the third one. But yeah. um, I think that the the gap uh, between them reduced. By a lot. I mean, the Brits are sailing really well. Yeah. Also, the Americans uh, yeah. won the Oceania, Oceania. Championship yeah. last week. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, for sure, the gap is is decreasing cool. uh, day by awesome. day. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a really ex- it's exciting to watch all of these fleets, but that that one's pretty exciting because it does have that kind of element of unknown. And with the foiling, the difference between foiling and not foiling, if you crash or make a bad maneuver. Yeah. Especially here, that it's so flat, this venue, that, you know, it's probably a totally different way to sail the, the NACRA with the right. foils, you know. And so, They'll be foiling more. Yeah, they will be foiling much more. And, yeah. uh, you know. Maybe some people a little bit better. Yeah, for sure. Consistently like that. For sure. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting uh, yeah. event. For sure, it's a really nice place for a um, high-performance boat when it's yeah, it seems on the water perfect. is so flat. Yeah. And it can reach super high speeds and it's much more fun. Cool. And, and I you think don't have to think about pitch bowling. Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't. Yeah. If I went out, I would. <laughs> so, great. Well, I think we have a really fantastic forecast for this week. Thanks for going through this huge arc of this, this story, but it's just the beginning. Yeah. So, do you mind if we check in with you later on in the week? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And good I'm luck to, to Maggie and Stephanie. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we're excited for them, too. Yeah.